Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the Ammo Nerd. We have an ammunition review today from AAC, not to be confused with the Silencer Suppressor Company. This is America's Ammunition Company, which is owned by the holding company that also owns Palmetto State Armory. This is in 300 blackout. This is a subsonic target plinking load, 220 grain Sierra Match King, long and strong. Let's throw him on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. In full transparency, Josiah over at Palmetto State Armory sent this ammunition over for me to review. I'm trying to catalog as much of the AAC ammunition as possible because it's a fairly new offering. They just finished their ammunition plant and they've been cranking out nine, five, five, six, 300 blackout and five, seven is next. It's around 40 to 45 degrees outside today, overcast, perfect day to get some shooting done. Don't let the snow fool you. It is kind of warm outside. We have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX at about 10 to 12 feet. We'll do a basic function check with a subsonic load like this. We want to ensure bullet stability that, you know, the bullet is flying straight coming out of our gun. So if we throw a can on there, we're not going to strike a baffle. We're also checking for function with these because they're going to be loaded on the lighter side to remain subsonic. After that, we'll do a gel test and we'll step out to about 100 yards to see what kind of practical accuracy we could expect from this load. We'll start with our shortest barrel length, which is from Palmetto State Armory. This is a seven and a half inch upper Yankee Hill one port Kurz muzzle brake up front. This has a one and seven twist barrel. Typically, you need to increase your twist rate or make it faster the shorter your barrel lengths go. Now, depending on the bullet type, we always need to check for stability. So I throw a target at about seven to 10 yards and I shoot you know, three or four rounds through it and I make sure I have good clean holes there because if you don't, that means you could get a baffle strike when you throw your suppressor on. There are some of the newer calibers, 8.6 black, for example, that have ultra fast twist rates, one and three, and the RPMs that that bullet spins is too fast for some designs. It will actually cause jackets and the bullets to come apart after they leave the muzzle, and that would be bad for your suppressor. So if you're checking out any new load, always check your gun and your target before you put your can on. This is 220 grains, so we'll see if we get cycling out of this. We did not get it out of the 208 grain until we put the can on the short barrel. You know, it'd help if I also actually inserted the magazine. Uh, this one's trying. I bet you we'll get a little better luck with the can. So far, I'm seeing good clean holes in our target. Yeah, needs just a little more gas. We got our JK Armament 4-in-1 rifle kit on our seven and a half inch upper. We should get good cycling out of it this time. Got locked back. And now onto our 10 and a half inch, another Palmetto State Armory build. This one has a one and eight twist barrel. We have our Tacticon Apex Falcon, one to six first focal plane scope up top. Radeon ambidextrous charging handle, nice little pistol build.
Nice, got locked back too. Let's throw the can on there. I apologize for not having the monitor. I broke the screen the last outing somehow. I got a brighter one on the way, but it's not here yet. Still the JK Armament Rifle Kit. Got locked back on the last round. Looks like these ones are a little slower than the 208 grain Amax. And finally, our 16 inch, another Palmetto State Army build, Trijicon MRO back up top, Radeon ambidextrous charging handle, battle arm safety selectors, mission first tactical pistol grip, and stock, our KCI Korean P mags. Based on the velocities from the seven and a half inch and 10 and a half inch, I don't think these are gonna go super either. Nope. That one was close. And that's all she wrote, folks. Uh oh, Raggy. We've ran into this before with our 300 blackout in our subsonic loads that we just can't get a good group with that particular bullet design and that would seem to be the case here with our 220 grain sierra match kings this was without the suppressor 5.212 inches it's about 40 degrees outside today a little on the humid side but no wind i can see the target clear as day we threw our jk armament rifle kit on here we tightened that group up to 3.263 inches but that's like the fifth and sixth group that we've shot today just not getting good accuracy now that we're using the 10 and a half inch barrel one and eight twist got an 18 power primary arms first focal plane scope on there not sure what to think as i've mentioned before we tested some s and b i think 220 grain a while back and the groups were just as bad that Barry's 220 grain TMJ gave us really good results with this same setup though. I figured why I had a few spare gel blocks, I wanted to highlight bullet selection choice in our 300 blackout. Typically our Sierra Match King and our Amax bullets are more geared towards precision shooting, you know, paper target punching versus use for hunting or self-defense because usually these bullets are designed to work at much higher velocities and when they're going subsonic they don't typically have any terminal effect what's going to probably happen is this bullet is going to tumble so we've got our 10 and a half inch here with our suppressor on here we'll take two shots at our six by six by six clear ballistics gel down there and see what the penetration depths of this looks like get lined up here see what we did. This is going to be extremely hard to see because it is overcast today and the blocks have been used. But we have a very long neck, right around five inches. You can see the first tumble there. And then because of how long that bullet is, this is kind of what our 5.7 likes to do after a certain penetration depth, is it likes to veer off of its uh, flight path. So right around the 12 inch mark to the 15, you can see the bullet is coming this way and it's gone. The same can be said for the second shot that you can see right here. We actually have a much longer neck. That one's almost out to the eight inch mark. There you can see our first tumble. It penetrates the full end of the block. Went out somewhere there and I cannot find it. I'll have to try to look for it. 
but I'm gonna guess it's gone and there's little to no deformation. Here is a bottom down shot. Here's the first shot and here's the second. You can see that cavity right there from where it first tumbled. There's our second cavity. You can see where it entered the block right down there when it's gone. Well, everyone, that concludes another standard ammunition test out here at the range. I'm really excited that we have another US manufacturer of ammunition, especially in very popular calibers, such as nine, 300 blackout, 556, soon to be 57, and hopefully various other flavors. I know they offer different components. I'm not sure when they'll offer primers as a reloading component, but as of 2022 or 2023, that still seems to be the hard thing for me to get is various different primers, especially large Magnum rifle primers. We were subsonic in all three of our barrel lengths with this particular load. Now, when it comes to accuracy, this is why I always say your mileage may vary. If you pick some of this up, drop me a comment below what you guys are seeing for accuracy, you know, at 100, 200 yards, however far you are shooting this. If you typically shoot supersonics in 300 blackout and you switch over to a subsonic at 100 yards, you're going to have at least 10 inches or more of drop that you're going to have to compensate for on your scope. So hopefully you don't have that maxed out. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various different ways to contact me, to ask me any questions, or there are different affiliate links or discount codes that earn me sales commissions that help me to continue what I do out here. Number two is Josiah McCollum over at Paul Metal State Armory, who in full transparency provided us with some of that AAC ammunition to test with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.